Hello and welcome back. Chris Kilgore here again, Writing Resource Coordinator for the School of Social Work at the University of Texas at Arlington. We have just completed the Hit the Library segment of the presentation and in the uh, downloadable PowerPoint that we have available to you here, when you get to this screen, you will be able to access the link in the middle of the page and click directly through to Brooks' uh, library guide for policy writing. I'm going to move on now. Uh, now that you have some sources in front of you, now that you have a sense of what sources are going to be useful, uh, the question that we often come up with is, okay, so how do I use those sources within my paper? Um, I have a few recommendations to offer there, and then in the next short video, I'll talk a little bit about how to use APA style to cite uh, policy documents, since that's a little bit different from ordinary APA style. So, how do we use sources in a policy analysis paper? Well, sources should support your primary claims about what's going on with this policy. It's usually really helpful if each of your paragraphs begins with a primary claim of your own, and then uses sources in a supporting role. It's also usually best if you can use more than one source to support each of your primary claims. Now, what do I mean by claim? I mean some claim that you are making about what's going on with this policy. Each of your sections will involve different types of claims that you might be making. In the history of the policy section, you might make claims about why specific previous policies were passed and where they fell short or where they were useful. In your history of the social problem page, you might be claiming that the problem is widespread, and then you might want to provide some data on that. You might make the claim that the problem has serious negative outcomes, and you'll provide some data to support that. Basically, we want the data to supply, to supply a supporting role. Okay? So, uh, you're going to want to know what kind of support you need for the individual parts of the project. So, for example, if you're using um, statistical uh, demographic data, you might be answering the question, how many people have the problem? Has the problem been getting worse? For that kind of information, you're going to be using that reliable public data that we discussed. You might also be using academic journal articles that have gone into that data in some depth. Now, if you're providing historical information, the history of the policy, the history of the social problem, you're going to need different kinds of sources. You're going to be making claims about how the policy's history developed, or possibly how the policy itself got passed. And to support claims about those kind of topics, you're going to need those government documents. And you may also be able to pull some of that information from your academic journal articles. When you begin to discuss the policy itself in your policy description section, you're going to need to be providing specific aspects of the policy. What does it do? How does it do it? For that, you're definitely going to need government documents and often the policy itself. So we need to make claims about how the policy works, what it does. Those are the kind of sources we're going to need to use. Now, it's possible that you're going to need to use other people's arguments to support your, your argument about how well the policy worked. If you need to import other people's arguments about how the policy works, then you're definitely going to need your academic journal articles. Those are usually the sources that make the clearest arguments about how well things work. When you do that, you may want to provide some information about how they figured that out. Hey, in a study on a national sample of people who experience this particular social problem, Johnson found that this has been getting steadily worse. Right? You may need to provide a little information about the methods that the sources used if you're using those academic journal articles to support this kind of discussion. If you're discussing stakeholders or interested parties in that kind of section, you're going to be making claims about who supported this policy and how they supported it. Did they, um, were they legislators who argued for its passage? Were they legislators who argued against its passage? Were they uh, community organizations that were in favor of it and advocated for it? To make that kind of claim and support that kind of claim, we're going to need those government documents if we're talking about um, who supported what and when, who voted how. But you may also need to turn to some other kinds of sources. For example, news articles sometimes report the positions that uh, um, legislators or organizations take on a specific policy. Um, it's possible also that academic journal articles may discuss who's been supporting or opposing a specific kind of policy. So there are multiple kinds of source that you might need to use to make an argument that some people have been supporting the policy, some people have been opposing the policy. Now, there's an important question that often gets raised when we're talking about using sources, and that is, when do I cite? How do I cite? So, first of all, when to cite a source? We need to provide an in-text citation anytime we use information that comes from one of your sources. 
anytime you use one information that comes from one of your sources, you're going to need an APA style in-text citation. Now, if you're drawing extensively on one source, you can structure your text so that you don't need a citation at the end of every single sentence. However, if you're going back and forth between several different sources, it's possible that you might end up with a citation every single sentence. APA style's goal is for you to convey as clearly to the reader which pieces of information are coming from which source. Whenever you use information from a source, it's important to f that the reader can locate a citation that shows where that information came from. Now, for more information, I highly recommend that you attend my specific presentation on APA style for social work. I give those presentations every semester, um, so you can always find one to attend. And I go into more detail about how you should use APA style to uh, cite a journal article, a website, a government source, any of those general kinds of sources. I'll cover that in those other presentations. Second important point. It's important sometimes to do more than just provide an in-text citation. Now, some of us may think of this as pretty basic information, but I find it's important to remember anytime you use an original source's exact words, even the policy itself, you'll need an APA in-text citation, but also will need to enclose those words that come from the source in quotation marks. For quotations, APA also asks us to include a page number to identify where in the source that came from. If you've got no page numbers, there are a couple other methods we can use. Again, I'll provide more information about how exactly to do that in the APA style for social work presentation. For our present purposes, the most important thing to remember is that when you use the original source's words, you're going to need an APA in-text citation and you're going to need to enclose the words in quotation marks. Now, a lot of the time we're asked to put information from our sources in our own words. It's very important to do this correctly. If you don't change enough of the words in the sentence, you can end up accused of plagiarism. This happens unintentionally to a lot of folks. It's very easy to do this um, unintentionally. So when you are removing the quotation marks, you're putting it in your own words, you have to make sure that you're doing that effectively. There are two rules of thumb you can follow here to check yourself. First of all, you can take the quotation marks off if you have changed the wording so that you have less than five signal words in a row. And by signal words, I just mean the bigger words, not a uh, or the or am, the, not those kind of words. But child abuse, that's two signal words. Okay, So make sure that you've got less than five signal words in a row. Now, you may be thinking, oh, I could go through and use a thesaurus to change every single word in the sentence and that would get me out of that five words rule. Well, if you do that, first of all, you'll get a dog ugly sentence because synonyms don't always mean exactly the same thing. So you want to be careful about using a thesaurus that way. But secondly, the grammatical structure of the sentence has to change. So you can only take the quotation marks off if you have less than five signal words in a row, but you can only take the quotation marks off if you've changed the structure of the sentence. Okay, the structure of the sentence has to change. That's because when I remove those quotation marks, I take credit not just for the word choice, but also for the order of the words in the sentence. And if I haven't changed the order of the words, then I'm still in kind of ambiguous territory between paraphrasing and plagiarizing, and I want to be careful about that. Again, I'll provide more specific information on this in my specific tutorials on APA style for social work. Those are a separate presentation. I give them every semester. In my next presentation, I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to use APA style to cite federal laws because that's very different from all other aspects of um, APA style. So if you're ready to cite a federal law, go on to the next video.